Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Coronavirus is in the air. No, not literally, but you're rest assured it's on today's lineup of The Advocate. Welcome to The Advocate, where your usual suspects are primed and loaded with information and no holds barred discussions just for you. I'll be taking Corona and the aware Nigerian's failure to comply with travel ban conditions. Is this a case of separating issues, home and away? Wenga is back with a bang and is very much on home territory. He tackles matters at the foundation of our democracy. He's asking, did we ever get things right to begin with in the first place? With all the noise swelling around COVID-19 and with entire nations on lockdown, Libras manages to combine two topical issues on one plate. He serves up a two in one, leadership and coronavirus. You know Libras, some like it hot. Sandra is asking if now is the right time for a preoccupation with technicalities. Dare I say, there's something for everyone. So be prepared to be satiated after the break. Not all culture is homegrown. Some are actually imported. When in Rome, or rather, when in Nigeria, I'm going to be talking about behavior of returning Nigerians during coronavirus season. I've been ticked off, thoroughly unimpressed by the laissez-faire attitude and behavior of so-called Awayan Nigerians returning to the home country during this season of coronavirus, some of whom are personally known to me. The world is facing a pandemic, which we could safely say has reached crisis level. In Italy and America, we saw the consequence of not taking this challenge seriously. And now, it's on home soil, on our doorstep. We have the opportunity to learn from the mistake of our European and transatlantic counterparts. Yes, we were a little late off the block as regards putting border control measures in place. But as the saying goes, better late than never. So far, all our index cases in Nigeria are as a result of Nigerians or foreign returnees coming into the country. And yet, no sooner do we put a travel ban with accompanying recommendation that we self-quarantine in place than some blatantly presume to flout it. I heard about one group of a family of 10 who recently flew in for a wedding and openly proceeded with wedding plans without so much as a buy your leave. We're not even talking of those who outrightly refuse to submit themselves when they discover symptoms for whatever reason. How reckless and how unpatriotic. What pains me is that many of those people would instinctively comply with the regulations in their country of departure or deal with the consequences. Do they feel their fellow natives are less deserving of consideration? I appeal to all of us, natives, returnee nationals, and even foreign residents alike. Don't make Nigeria a dumping ground for lawless conduct. Now is not the time to think of me, myself, and I. Or with the transmission rate of this virus, sooner than we think, we may learn the hard lesson that what goes around comes around. Yeah, um, there are um, a lot of um, reasons for such behaviors. When you know fully well that um, in Nigeria, laws are largely, you know, um, obeyed in um, breach. disobedience, <laughs> in breach. And, and so the tendency not to want to obey, like I always say, in a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law abiding. You know, and then we have not reached that level of, um, you know, sensitization to actually sensitize the people that it's not a death sentence. So with the facilities on ground, a lot of people are, do not have that confidence that even our hospitals can take care of them. And, and so they want to self-medicate. 
And so these are some of the various reasons why you see, you know, people running away. I ran, learned just recently also in Oshu State, some of the persons that were quarantined in the primary school, a lot of them ran away. And then you ask yourself, why would you want to quarantine somebody in a primary school environment where there are no beds, there are no mosquito nets? You, you know, the person will look at his life and like, you don't want to even die even before realizing that I don't even have the virus. Right, die at home. At home. That. So no, but but, but, but if you look, I, I mean, but, yeah. but mm. there's need for government. This reason for government is security and welfare of the people. There's need for, that's why they have so much money. Sensitize the people, ensure that the facilities are in place. And then also there should be consequences for our actions and inaction. But because there are no consequences, that is why they come here and then they flout this rule. Yeah, I mean, but in those places yeah. where they are coming from, like mm, you said, mm. there's consequence for every action and I beg Sano no day. Yeah. So that's basically No, but I mean, like, part of why I targeted the away young people is that they should know better. These are people who are, at least they can afford enough to fly out and fly in. Ah, so, so okay. no, they can't say that ignorance is their problem, at least I would think. And then, you know, on top it's of that, it, we're even just saying self-quarantine. We're not saying come and stay in a, in a school ground. But you see people roaming around, Did going for weddings. You can stay in Nigeria, your house for 14 Bini, days. Bini lady in Italy that, you know, locked themselves in a church and we're trying to organize a wedding in, it, in Italy with the crisis. And so it's all about whether we are or Nigeria. We, for me, I think that just like what um, Libras has said, the issue is that we, we back a lot much more than we bite. Yeah. That is Nigerians' problem. You know, there are a lot of laws. And to even start with, your advocacy said that we were not prompt to, resp to respond to the Initially, issue situation. Yeah. How long did it take the president for him to address the nation? No, we virtually begged him. We begged him to come on, you know, to come out and openly address COVID, the nation. COVID so this so-called president <laughs> come into the country. Oh, the president or nobody, no leader is, is saying that anything. Yes, yes, yes. No leader is saying anything concerning the virus. It's just all talks on social media. Social media was actually our awareness campaign. Nobody addressed it. So they felt like, okay, maybe. Yeah. There's no law There's operating no law here. Operating no, but you see, part so of why I wouldn't let them the off in spite of what you're saying is that these same people, and I, I, I know them personally, they're quick to lecture the average Nigerian. See, people, right, are, right. people are not doing the right thing. You but now nice. you are here and you show yourself to be, for me, it's just selfishness. You're no, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. So you won't be you better than us. No, but just I agree because, with you to a very large extent, mm. but I'm trying to also try to share the blame. Mm. You know, we also need to do more. Remember, now, the moment we discovered the first case, the index yes. case, I expected us to lock our borders. Okay. Because if we won't, if, because they, like they say, if you tell gently, gently, or that shall one day have to tell, who will hear your voices without laughter. Now we are forced to lock those same borders that we were reluctant to, to do. Yeah. And so, and now it is spreading like wildfire every day, 20 new cases, 15 new cases there. And, and so, who still would have gotten to this stage. Why don't you, you know, take preemptive step immediately, knowing that you don't have, knowing that you don't have the facility, measure, yeah, yeah. and then, after that, you know, we, we all would have been able to be going to work and come back. Yes. Look at what Chad did, a small country like Chad. They didn't even wait for index case for the laptop. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yes. but here we waited. And so that is why these people, these returnees, are where people will look at us as, you know, less human. And then look, I have, even though they want to lecture us on how to behave, but they come back here, they, they are even worse than some of us. That's, that's the impression you know, they government, government, sorry quickly, government yeah. should ensure that irrespective of your status, you must comply with the rules. Mm -hmm. More so, you know, there was um, there was a lot of misinformation going on around that time when you know um, China was at the peak of their own case, saying that black people are immune, so yeah, much so because the first person to recover from the virus there in China was was a black. And so the news was that, oh, black people are immune. They, they came up with some form of, you know, some theory. some theory, so to say, that we do not, we, there's something in our, you know, in our, in, DNA. In our DNA. No, but why don't that some people say alcohol, alcohol. It was going but, round. No, but that I wouldn't excuse. It. If I you have it. a clear, no, this is what we're dealing with. You have a clear law that says when you come in, self-quarantine, they expect you was to be a, responsible. Was it, was it actually <laughs> clear? No, it was stated. It was stated. <laughs> and the people I, I know of who were flouting it knew of it. They just couldn't be e bothered. E e I'm just, e I'm e dealing with an attitude. E e e e e e e e e um, okay. I believe very strongly that um, out of responsibility, we always escape us from trouble. It is irresponsibility that makes a man become liability. The reason why we have liabilities now is because some people just decided to be responsible, either by greed or by religious stupidity. Okay. 
how can you tell me that uh, if I drink Ogogoro, if I drink uh, Shekwe, mm -hmm. the thing go, it go wash them away? How can you tell me that? You know, we are, we, we are so stupid that people were making music, album for Corona. Coronavirus. You know? Mm. Uh, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have our own diseases. Uh, you understand? <laughs> and we like them. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, people forget that, A, when we say this thing is deadly, it is deadly. Do you understand? It's depressing. Somebody told me, somebody who, who managed a cancer patient told me that, if, if, you, if you stay near someone who is actually trying to breathe from this corona, uh, corona disease, that you will, you will pity uh, the patient. Yeah. So for me, I think we should just take responsibility. Mm. Everybody, whether you are in, whether you are out, like yeah, you said, it's for everybody, really. what, you will not, what you will not throw on ground at Heathrow Airport, just yeah. no more sachet, no more chungum um, rap, mm -hmm. rapper. You come here, you just drop it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because it has been, it has Benga. been built in Benga. Yes. Okay, Nigeria Benga. is dumping ground. ground. Oh, and a personal you, experience, a personal that. experience in Heathrow, we're all on the queue. Mm. I don't want to mention the person's name. Everybody knows him. We're all on the queue. Be business class, first class. You know, we flew British Airways. We got into Nigeria. The moment we got to Nigeria, right at the door, so people were already waiting for him. They collected his uh, passport, and then he was just walking. At that point, he and believes then, he's, he's above yes. everybody. And then, above. and then I, everybody was just looking at him. I tapped him, and I said, look, you're an ambassador. Everybody here know you. And, and so, in another man's country just now, where you work and ply your trade, you, you be be stayed it. on the queue. But here, in your own country, you want to jump. You want to show, what is the guarantee that if you come out before me, that your bags will come out before, because yeah. the bags won't respect you. Yeah. <laughs> so he thanked me and collected his passport back. That's our At attitude. least he listened to you. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> oh, wow. Anyway, huh? well, I think we, we, we started addressing the issues, an attitudinal thing. Mm -hmm. There's such a thing as shared responsibility, irrespective of where you live. You do your bit, and I do mine. After the break, Wenga assesses whether the we factor of our nationhood got modeled up.